Hello, accounting superstars. This is the Accounting Superstar Station. I'm Professor Don Bush. I've been teaching accounting for about 30 years, been a CPA for about that long also, and I've got great ways to explain accounting. And today we're doing our third example of operating leases. And the thing that's different about this example is, is that the payments are due at the beginning of the year, which is very typical of leases. So this example is a little bit more complicated. Not much, but a little bit. We'll work it out. So here we go, folks. So understanding the facts. Here we go. When we get to a construction is leasing a weed whacker from Weed Whackers R Us. Now I chose a Weed Whacker because I wanted to keep the numbers real small and Weed Whackers are not terribly expensive. So 1.2, the lease agreement begins on January 1st, 2001 and 1.3, Weed Whacker is not of a specialized nature. If you were been watching the last two um, examples, you would know what uh, this means. It means that this Weed Whacker was not developed by NASA or or some organization that made a super weed whacker that's only useful for when we get, get to a construction, but rather this is just simply a weed whacker. The lease is not cancelable, non-cancelable. Lease term in years, three years. Folks, the lease is going to go for three years. The weed whacker fair value at the beginning of the lease is $200. The Weed Whacker's economic life in years is five years, so that five years includes the three years of the lease, five years total. 1.8 estimated salvage value at the end of the lease, and I've gotten bright red here, unguaranteed. $80 in leases, whether it's unguaranteed or guaranteed is very, very important. And so I wanted to spell that out, that's why I put it in bright red. 1.9, no lease renewal options. When we get to a construction, we'll not own the Weed Whacker. 1.10, the lease interest rate used by Weed, whack, by weed Whackers are us and known by when we get to it is 6%. That's the rate of return. So 1.11, lease payments are made annually beginning January 1st, 2001. And that this is what makes this example different than the others. The lease payments are due at the beginning of the lease, which is typical. So determine the payment. Oftentimes in these problems, the textbook will just tell you what the payment is, but um, we'll, we'll just figure it out. Good practice. So 2.1, here we go. Find the present value of the residual value. So the residual value is $80. That's from the information up above. Interest rate is 6%, also from information up above. Lease term, three years and here, here's what you do to find that 6717. Go to formulas. Go to financial. Go down here to NPV. There you are, NPV. And so the print might be a little tiny here for you, so I'll read what's going on. Rate, the interest rate is 6%. Just click on it. The value for the first year, see what we're doing is finding the present value of $80 a lump sum in three years. So the value for the first year is going to be zero. The value for the second year is zero, but the value for the third year is $80. There you go. And all you would do is hit OK and you would have the answer. The 6717 is the present value of the residual value. Now we're going to use that number in the next step. Determine the amount to be recovered through the lease payments. Well, the fair value of the lease of the fair value of the weed whacker is $200 minus away the present value of the residual value, which is 6717, and you get 132.83. So you just do a little subtraction. So coming down here just a little bit, we're almost done. 2.3, determine the amount of the annual payment. The amount to be recovered through the lease payments is 132.83. We got that right up above. The interest rate again is 6%, the number of annual payments beginning of each year, not at the end, but at the beginning, there's going to be three payments. So once again, we get to use the power of Excel. So what you do is go up here to formulas, go to financial, go down to payment this time, PMT, payment. And here's what it wants to know. Rate, what's the interest rate? Well, the interest rate is 6%. The number of periods is three. 
Present value, there we go, 132.83, that's the amount to be recovered. Now, down here to type, we need to put in the number one. If you leave it blank, the computer or Excel will think that the payments happen at the end of the year. But in this case, the payments happen at the beginning year of the year. So to tell Excel this, we need to type in the number one and Excel will be happy and get the job done for us. So lastly, you would just hit the OK button and I've already got it all figured out so I'm gonna just cancel out of it. There we go, so the payment is 46.88, right there. So come on, on down here, so Step number three, create a list of the minimum lease payments. In this problem, this is not too important, but in future problems, it'll be very important. And it's good to get used to this and just get into the habit of looking at this. So the minimum lease payments include the following. Now, when I first started doing accounting, I thought minimum lease payments, that word minimum, is this the min minimum amount that you have to send in? And that's not quite what it means. Um, I, I don't know why they chose the word minimum lease payments, but um, what it is is these are amounts that are going to be used to determine the capitalized amount here, uh, the amount to be capitalized. So number one, rental payments excluding executory costs, 4688. Where do we get that? Right up here, we figured it out, 4688. What are executory costs? Executory costs are things like insurance, maintenance, property taxes, and so we exclude them. Bargain purchase option. Can we buy this weed whacker at the end of the lease for a dollar or something? Uh, uh, and the answer is no, there's no bargain purchase option, so we'll leave it blank. Guaranteed residual value, not unguaranteed, but guaranteed, no guaranteed residual value here, folks. Penalty for failure to renew lease, they are not uh, going to renew the lease and there's no penalty for failing to renew the lease so that's zero also so coming on down here step number four double check make sure it's an operating lease or is it a financing lease now all of the answers here are no so when they're all no that means it's an operating lease but let's go through this because if any one of these were yes then it would be a financing lease so test number one, transfer of ownership, is when we get to it, construction going to own this weed whacker? And the answer is no. They're just going to give it back at the end of the lease. Is there a bargain purchase option at the end of the lease? The answer is no. Lease period, 75% or more of the economic life. Well, the uh, lease is for three years. The economic life is five years, so if you go three divided by five, that's equal to 60%, which is not quite 75%, so the answer is no. Present value of lease payments equals 90% of fair market value. Well, the present value of the lease payments is 132.83. Where'd we get that? We got it from right up here. There it is. It's the amount to be recovered through the lease payments, 132.83. <laughs> And the fair market value of the lease of the um, asset is $200 at the beginning of the lease. So if you take 132 divided by 200, you get 66%. That is not 90% or greater. So the answer is no. And is this of specialized use? No, it isn't. It's not a special weed whacker. It's just a simple weed whacker. So it's an operating lease. So coming down here, we got to make an amortization table, and this is a, a very important step because if this is wrong, everything else will be wrong. So you want to get it right. It's pretty easy though. So here's what's happening. I've got the dates here. I've got uh, the first date here, 1-1-2001, one one, and then I've got 1-1-2001 one one, right after it again. Well, what I'm doing here is the first 1-1-2001, uh, one one, I'm listing the beginning balance. 132.83 and again that is the amount that's capitalized it comes from right up here there we go we figured it out 132.83 132.83 so coming down here so it's just our our beginning balance so here it is 132.83 and then right on the very first day of the lease the day that we signed the lease uh, when we get to a construction has to pay out 4688 now since no time has passed it's on the very first day of the lease there's no interest 
And so all of the payment is going to reduce the lease liability. So now on the very first day, the lease liability is reduced down to 85.95. All you do is take 132.83 minus away 46.88 and you get 85.95 and there you go. Uh, at the uh, beginning of the second year, we're going to make another payment, 4688. The interest is going to be 516. How do you get 516? Well, all you do is you go, well, the balance is 8595. Interest rate is 6%. So 6% times 8595, you get 516. And we're going to reduce the lease liability. So how do we get 4172? Well, you just go 4688 minus 516 is 41.72. I also listed it up here. Column A, column B, and this is column A minus B. So coming over here, we got 44.23. Where'd that come from? Well, 85.95 minus 41.72 is 44.23. And at the beginning of the third year, making another payment of 46.88, the interest is 265. How did we get the 265? Well, it's 6% of 44.23 and you get 265. Reduce the lease liability, that's simply 46.88 minus 265 is 44.23 and how does it end up being zero? 44.23 minus 44.23 is zero and these amortization tables should always be zero at the end, or at least very, very close to it. You might be a couple pennies off because of rounding errors, but if you're a thousand dollars off or seventy-five dollars off or a million dollars off, you did it wrong, so you need to fix it. So don't go on until you have it uh, corrected. So going down to the journal entries. So what I'm going to do is split the screen so that way we can see what is going on. There we are. So here we go. Here are the journal entries for the very first year. Recording leasing the Weed Whacker on January 1st, 2001. So we're debiting right of use asset for 132. Where'd we get the 132? That's the beginning balance right there. And we're crediting lease liability for the same amount. So here in the very first entry, we're recognizing an asset. And that's the whole objective of operating leases now these days. Um, it doesn't matter what kind of a lease you have, with very few exceptions, all leases need to record an asset and a liability. So here we go. Now we're not recording equipment or weed whacker or property plant equipment. We're recording right of use asset because that's what it is. We get to use the asset for three years and we have a liability. Now here in the next entry, here's the very first payment they're paying out. 4688. So lease liability is being reduced by 4688. Cash is being spent 4688. And then coming down to the adjusting entry here. It is. Let me raise it up just a tiny bit more. There we go. So record the adjusting entry at the end of the first year. So this is the end of 2001, December 31st, 2001. And December 31st, 2001 is very, very close to January 1st, 2002. They're only one day apart, so we're going to uh, use these numbers in here. So lease expense, 4688. Where does that number come from? It's coming from right there. Lease liability, um, we owe a little bit more because of that interest, 516. And the right of use asset, we're amortizing it away. And it's a plug. So how do we figure out this plug? Well, uh, what you do is you go Debit 4688 minus 516 equals 4172. It also happens to equal that number right there, too. Here we are coming down to the second year, folks. So we're making a payment. 4688, there's the payment. Paying out cash. Adjusting entry at the end of the year, December 31st, 2002. Well, December 31st, 2002 is the end of year two, which is really, really close to the beginning of year three. 1-103 is just one day apart here. They're just one day apart. So lease expense, 4688, 4688. Uh, lease liability, the interest part, 265 comes from right there. And the right of use asset, which is a plug, is right there. How do we get the plug? Take your debit, minus away your credit. There's your plug. Coming down to the third year. 
Here we go, the third and final year, folks. So at the beginning of the third year, on January 1st, 2003, we pay out some cash and the lease liability is decreased by 4688. There it is, 4688. Cash being credited for 4688. Now the, the last adjusting entry is just a little different, not much, but a little bit. Um, lease expense is being debited for 4688. There's no interest because at this point in time, the liability was completely paid off. Uh, right up here, record the third payment at the beginning of the third year. When we paid this 4688 right here, the liability was completely paid off because that payment was made at the beginning of the third year, not at the end of the third year, at the beginning. And so there's no interest, there's no interest. So I've got here a plug, easy plug, uh, lease expense 4688, debit, credit, uh, right of use asset, we're amortizing that away. And what I like to do is I like to double check my work. So I made up two T accounts and I did this to make sure I did this correctly. Scoot this up just a little bit. There we go. There we are. So I made two T accounts, right of use asset and lease liability. And anytime I uh, debited or credited these accounts, I, I wrote it down here. So right of asset, right of use asset was debited for 132.83 right at the beginning. Lease liability was credited for the same amount. And right over here, I just kept track of the balances of lease liability just to make sure I was doing it okay. And so um, as the journal entries progressed, and uh, you know, we credited right of use asset for 4172. You could go back and double check and make sure that's right. 4423, 4688, and it ended up being zero, which is what it should be at the end of the lease. And the same thing here with the lease liability. It started out at 132.83. We paid off 4688, but then there was that interest. Paid off another 4688, and there's a little bit more interest. Paid off 4688, and it all equals zero. So that way I knew I did a good job. So ladies and gentlemen, always a good idea to figure out ways to double check your work. Make sure you did it. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Hope it helped you out. And um, the next lesson is going to be about operating leases, but from the lessor's point of view. And fortunately, that has not changed from the old rules, and it's still quite easy. So we'll see you in the next example. If you like this, um, hit that like button. Uh, you know, hit, hit the subscribe button. That way I know that you folks are getting some benefit from this and I'll keep making these videos for you and until then we'll see you later over and out